A couple of years ago, we started the Oklahoma Gardening Home Video Garden Contest for the sole purpose of getting ideas about gardening enthusiasts across the state, ones that we'd like to go and visit with. We reached our goal. As a matter of fact, over two years, we stockpiled quite a few places to visit, one of which today we're at here in Claremore at the home of Miss Earlene Sutton. And Earlene sent in an entry back in 1991 on her herb garden and perennial garden. And here we are. And Earlene, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thank you, Steve. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Now, you call this your... This is my cutting garden. I have a few, you know, uh, herbs that we use for cooking, but most of it is for cutting that I use in uh, uh, flower arranging. Now, tell us a little bit about the design. Really a cute little garden, what you had in mind here. Well, um... I first started out with just that little area right behind you and then one little place over there and it just seemed to, I, I didn't look at any design in any book, I, it just kind of grew and I, the more flowers I bought, the more space I had to make. So this is really the only reason it got to be this way and this size. Well, uh, we're interested, of course, this year we're highlighting everlasting uh -huh. or, or cut flower gardens. Yes. And I feel like you're an expert. Well, I, <laughs> I, I'm not an expert, but, you know, trial and error. I've learned a lot about flowers. I, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about herbs until about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, as I said, I've just uh, I've bought a few, and some, some have not done very well, and some have been wonderful. And, and these in here I, I use for cutting, and mm -hmm. uh, this is a... Uh, a perennial status and this is sea lavender okay. and I cut them right before they start to be in full bloom because after they're cut they will even open up more so if uh, if I wait then uh, so it's better the, to cut them earlier than later yes, on yes yes cut them a little bit before they're in mm -hmm. full bloom then after they're dried and all this is a perennial so it'll come back okay. year after year and all I do is I just uh, go down and cut it all right. and then they're just uh, uh, hung by bunches Okay. Uh, out in my garage. Okay. Now, another one that's here next to this that you cut is uh, kind of interesting, too. It's the same principle. Again, you're doing a little bit earlier yes. than later. Yes. What is this one? This is, this is Russian sage. Uh, it's not a cooking sage. It's just mainly for decoration. It has these purple flowers on it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some of them, like this one here, may be a little bit too full in bloom, but we'll go ahead and cut it, and we'll okay. go ahead and, and dry it. And we just snip them off. And right. I usually cut uh, from say 10 o'clock in the morning till uh, late in the evening before the dew starts to come again because you don't want your uh, flowers to be wet or damp because they'll tend to mold or okay. mildew. So it's kind of the opposite of when we would normally harvest that's things. Right. We do it in the hottest part of the day. Yeah, that's right. Now another interesting one behind me is yarrow, right? Yes. That one happens to be a lavender yarrow. Most everybody knows the, the yellow mm -hmm. yarrow. But, uh, uh, but this one is a lavender. They even make a red, yeah. Now and the you, same principle with it. Mm -hmm. Now, you usually cut more clumps, too, to yes. a little bit easier for drying, which we'll talk about a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Now, this one is what? These are Shasta daisies. And uh, there's a different principle on these. These you cannot hang and dry because the petals are a little bit tender mm -hmm. and they'll shower. And we're going to put these. We cut them off about like this, okay. and we'll put them in silica gel. All right. Type Which of you'll gel, show and you'll put them in there. I'll show you how to okay. do these too. Now behind us is is an interesting one that grows in some gardens, but I don't think many people have thought about growing it for a cut flower. No, no. This is bronze fennel, and uh, <clears throat> I cut the tops for drying because of the flower. It's a lot like a yarrow, mm -hmm. but also uh, the uh, I guess you'd call it the leaves or whatever uh, the it is, the ferny like. Mm -hmm. It, it's very pretty uh, to use in right. that, and it's, uh, it has such a wonderful smell, too. Well, it's ironic, too. We have this one in our garden, yes. not only because of its cut purposes, but it's kind of an interesting edible landscape plant, right. too. It has right. a lot of color. Oh, yes. Now, your uh, trial and error has expanded a little <laughs> bit, hasn't it, from this yes. little garden. Yes, Tell yes. us what you have all behind us Well, here. as I said, I've run out of room here, so <laughs> I'm expanding on the farther. And... Um, I have over on this side Silver Queen, and okay. that and that I use, you use a lot of that in the wreaths we use. Silver Queen is a type of Artemisia. Okay. There's Silver King, I think most everybody knows mm -hmm. Silver King, but this happens to be Silver Queen. It's a real silver color, and it's very pretty, and it, uh, you can practically use it just as it's cut, not necessarily have to let it dry. Mm -hmm. You can work it right in right then. So you've expanded to your garden yes, area behind yes. us. Yes, uh, we grow, um, we're growing uh, wildflowers out on this side. And over here is our coxcomb. Of course, it's just now starting to bloom. Mm -hmm. It won't be ready to cut uh, until probably about August. We'll start cutting it. Now, you don't cut just September. Uh, restrict your harvest to your garden, do you? You, you try no. some of the things along the roadside? Oh, yes. 
Yes, we. Uh, I I stop. My husband hates to travel with me because <laughs> I have to stop and gather gather things for seeds and thing. And we've got Queen Anne's lace, okay. which grows abundantly along the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we cut that. And and anything I think would be pretty. I try it all. Sometimes all right. it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does. Well, Arlene, let's go talk now a little okay. bit about how to dry because that's a very important part. And right. then you're also going to show us how to use some yes. of it. Yes, I sure will. Thanks. Now, Arlene, how long have you been working with dried flowers? Well, it's been about, just about this three years that I've really got into it heavy. I've always liked flowers, but just been doing it about three years. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular method that is maybe the most common way to dry them now that we've got them harvested? Mm -hmm. Yes, the most common way is, uh, now this is yarrow, is to just air dry them. And uh, all I do is just rubber band uh, up some bunches and you don't you don't put too many at a time it whoops excuse me in a bunch but um, because they they'll mildew too easily mm -hmm. so you just put a few and I just rubber band around rubber bands are easier to use than tying them with strings because okay. as they dry the shrinks and then they'll just fall so the rubber band will tighten mm -hmm. up as they dry so you're and then I hang them on racks yes now these we put in our uh, garage, which is uh, well ventilated and it's uh, uh, dark in there. And uh, you don't want sunlight on these because the sunlight um, will fade the flowers. So we don't dry them outside or anything like that. And I just uh, snap them over like this and let mm -hmm. them hang until till the stems. Now that when the stems start to turn brown and things, then you'll know that they're dry enough. Okay. You don't necessarily look to see if the flower is dry, but this part, that way you'll mm -hmm. know that it's dry enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what kind of rack is that? Is that something Well, now special? this is an antique uh, drying rack okay. itself, but um, uh, you can use anything. You can use coat hangers with just hanging them down, coat hangers, and uh, we use the rafters in our garage, and we've made some racks similar to this, and, and uh, of course, we just uh, start hanging them in mm -hmm. there, and we'll hang all summer long. In fact, the... Uh, there's not much room in the garage after we get through with the drying all the things that we do dry. About how long are we looking at as an average for something to dry like okay, that? Okay, it takes about, uh, these now here are just about halfway dry and they've been hanging about two weeks. Okay. Okay, so it t sometimes takes a month. It depends okay. on the density of the flower and things. Right. And speaking of density, the things that are a little bit thicker or more lush. Yes. Like, uh, well, the Shasta Daisy mm -hmm. here. This, see, with the petals and things, cannot be air dried. Uh, it'll just turn brown and fall apart. The petals will all fall apart. So we started working with the, the silica gel. Okay. Now, this is a, a, a drying medium, and uh, what we do is we, we put it in an airtight container, and you just mm -hmm. sprinkle some in the bottom, and then you set your, set your flower down in like this. Mm -hmm. And then you take more of it and uh, put, it around, put it around like this. Okay, now you've worked with the daisies, roses, mm -hmm. what, what other types? We do, uh, we do the zinnias. Okay. Uh, the little, little zinnias, bigger zinnias, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to cut these off a little bit. Now, you don't worry about having your stems long because if you want to use them in a floral arrangement, then you come back with a florist wire okay. and you just wire it to it. And uh, we do all of these. You can do, you know, several, several. things at mm -hmm. once in this. Some things that we have done is this is uh, Queen Anne's Lace, which grows wild along right. the road, and uh, it was the same way, we, and it's mm -hmm. already dried. Then you put the lid on. Now, mm -hmm. generally, mm -hmm. how long would that take to just uh, dry them with the silica gel? Just to dry it with the silica gel. Of course, still, it depends on, you the know, the thickness, density and thickness uh -huh. of it, but uh, it will take about a week. Okay. Now, you've found a way to speed that process yes, up, haven't yes. you? Yes, uh, yes. I bought a book, and you can use your silica gel and uh, do it in the microwave. Uh, you, it, you go by poundage of this stuff. This comes weighed out in pounds. This mm -hmm. is a five pound bucket of it. Okay. And uh, it, for doing, say, uh, one layer, you'd use about a pound and a half, and it would only take about two minutes in your microwave. Is that on, on high? Medium, medium? No, on medium. Okay. On medium in your microwave, and they would be dry in two minutes. So you could dry a lot faster if you mm -hmm. were in a hurry. Now, I understand, you don't really encourage people to do microwave drying without the silica gel, though. No. It can uh, run I, into some problems. Right. Though. I have not found uh, uh, the flowers to dry that well. And in fact, they just like cook, like right. a, a food Tara, would cook. Basically. Yeah. yeah, they just shrivel up and turn dark. So you have to use the gel in the microwave. Right. And it's not dangerous or anything right. to that effect. Huh? Now, the finished product. These yes. are kind of your own signature. Yes. Tell me about those. We, uh, uh, we, I do the wreaths, and uh, we use all of the things that we grow. 
in our herb garden. These are Sweet Annie, and then we use the Coxcomb and the Larkspur, which is one of my favorites, and of course the Hydrangeas, and this is the Yarrow, and, uh, and, uh, that, and then I have a little chair that we've started designing that has the dried things on it. It's just uh, made out of little branches that we've cut off the trees around the area and put little birds on them. And then my husband makes the birdhouses for me and, uh, and then we put the dried stuff on front of it. Now you have yeah. somebody else that's in your entourage of helping you out too. Don't oh you? yes, my mother. Oh, okay, so this is kind <laughs> she of a does team a, effort. Yes it is. She does a lot of the cutting for me now. Oh, okay. uh, uh, and uh, she loves, she's into doing this too. And, and she gathers the rose petals and dries them, and we make potpourri and things with that, yes. Well, Arlene, we appreciate you sending in a videotape. We would have never found out about <laughs> you. You're a well-kept secret. Well, thank you. So, I, I enjoy doing it very much. Well, thank you again. And if you're wondering, too, this year we're on hold with the video contest. But if you have any other ideas that you want to share with us, ways that you dry flowers, types of flowers, ideas like this, don't forget about the viewer's bulletin board, and you can send in pictures and descriptions on how to do that. And Arlene, thanks again. Well, thanks. I was, I was glad to do it.